Okay, now let's add some buttons to this uh, to this layout. So we want to build a little navigation bar uh, that'll be part of this uh, this design. So if you're going to use fireworks to make buttons and they're going to be part of your layout, um, you can do them at the same time you're doing your layout, but only if they're going to be horizontal, say horizontal across the top where I'm going to put them. If they're going to be vertical, stacked vertically down the side, then you would do those on a separate canvas in Fireworks. The process is the same, but you do them on separate canvases, and then once you have your layout done and the buttons done, once you get back into Dreamweaver, you would put them together. Okay, but I'm going to put my buttons horizontally, and uh, beca f because of that, I'm gonna, I can do it right now on this canvas. And the reason for that is it has to do with slicing. When we go to cut this up into pieces, um, I need a great big clean piece right across the middle. I can't have those vertical buttons that would be in the way of that. Okay, and hopefully that'll make more sense once we get over to Dreamweaver, and uh, I might even run through that process uh, in one of these tutorials. Okay, so I want to create uh, a set of buttons across the top here. Now, Dreamweaver has a um, has a button tool that helps us do that uh, design just to do this for us. So I'm going to go up to Edit and to Insert and to New Button. Okay, so it's going to open up a separate canvas here. Now, if you notice across the top here, it tells me that I'm editing this bu button, this bu this button, or this button symbol is what you'll hear it called. And to go back to my page one, I could just toggle, click right there, and go right back to my layout. But here's where I'm going to design the button. Also, you'll notice that this button has its own set of layers. So if I was going to make sort of a complicated um, item in here, or symbol in here, I have the necessary layers to do it. All right, so uh, I'm just going to make a simple button, just a rectangle with some text on it. So I pick up the rectangle tool, um, draw out a rectangle. Now the most important thing here is the size. So let's say I've already done some planning, and I know I need seven buttons. My layout 770 pixels. So with a little math, I know that that's going to need to be 110 pixels wide. And the height is a little more flexible. I just don't want great big thick buttons, so I'm going to make this about 20 pixels high. And um, there is my button, and I just need to make sure it's over that crosshair. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered, but it certainly is okay if it is. Okay, so I've got this white rectangle, and uh, maybe to give it a little bit of dimension, I'm going to just put a um, an inner bevel here. Now you have to be careful with these filters because I don't want to make this button any bigger. And if I choose shadow, glow, outer bevel, almost all that other stuff, it actually ends up making your button bigger. So I want an inner bevel, and I don't want it to be very thick. I just want it to be, uh, uh, just have a little edge on it. So I'm going to change that to three and see how it looks. So you can see I just get um, a little edge around that, and I may even put a little thin stroke on this. If I do that, I get a little stroke. So. Um, I think that'll be okay for now, and uh, I can come back once I get it on there. I can come back and change colors really easily. Uh, all right, and now I'm going to put a little bit of text on. So again, pick up the text tool, click, and it's get, it's ready to start typing some text. I'll worry about the size and everything once I get this out. Um, so this is my going to be my sample, uh, or I should just say button one. Okay, so the important thing here is that this text, um, it, that this text fits on my canvas, uh, on top of my button. So, uh, if I was doing this for real, not just a sample here, I would want to use uh, one of my actual words or one of my actual labels for this part. Um, I would just write down the labels that I was that was going to be on that were going to be on each one of the buttons, and then um, use whatever one was longest, the longest word, so that that longest word fit on my button. So you can see there, uh, there's the button. Now I might want to have Fireworks help me align this. So if I have my black selection tool and I mark here around both of these, both of them become selected. Um, and up here under the modify menu, they've got a little align, and I can center them vertically, and then go to modify, align, and center horizontal. Okay, and that gives me a way to let fireworks do that alignment work. All right, so that is looking okay. Um, 
Now with this button tool, I could be finished now if I wanted to, but if I want these buttons to have a rollover effect, so when the mouse goes over them they change, um, I can do that right here uh, in, in this little tool. So down in the property bars you can see there's a little thing here that says state, the up state. So what I've just created is what the button's going to, going to look like when it's just sitting on the page, the up state. So let's create a overstate, what it's going to look like when the mouse rolls over it. So I'm going to switch here from the up state to the overstate, and you'll see I have a new blank canvas. Now I don't want to recreate that, um, so there's a button right over here that says copy up graphic. So I click that, now I've got a copy of it, and all I think I'm going to change is I think I'll have the text change color. Uh, maybe I want it to match this orange, so I'll just pick a, a color here, and when I do that, maybe it needs a little stroke. Um, so, again, I'm just making a little subtle change, a little subtle color color change. Uh, so I've, I've created an, an, an up state and an over state. Okay, so just a little color change. Um, let's go back to the main canvas once, that's, once I've created that. I'm going to go back to the main canvas here. And I got to zoom out a bit. Okay, so you can see that Fireworks has put this little green film in. Like I didn't make my button green, but it's put that in there. And what that is is that is one copy or one instance of that button that I just created. And if I put my mouse anywhere in that green film, I can click and drag it and start positioning it up here on the canvas. So I probably want to zoom in to get that in the right place. Um, and then if your mouse is a little bit too clunky, once that uh, has been selected, I can kind of nudge it around to fit it right into the into place where I want it to show up. Okay, so there's one button. Now, I, would, I don't want to have to go through that process for each of my seven buttons. Uh, so Fireworks on its own has created this button and uh, placed it here in the document library. Uh, I got an extra one here. Let me get rid of that. Okay, so there is the button that it created. So that's in the document library. So if that window is not open, you can get that open by going to the window menu and down to document library. And that will open it up. Okay, so there is that's kind of the master or that's the symbol that you created. Now, if I want another button just like the one that I have, all I've got to do is drag out from here. And then I can just slide this into place. And I might, once it gets close, I might use my arrow keys um, to nudge it just right. So let me drag another one out here, get it close, and then use the arrow keys to get it exact. Now, I know what you might be thinking is that they all say the exact same thing. That's OK, because when you make buttons this way, um, everything about this set of buttons is going to be identical. It's actually all controlled by what's over here in the in the library except for the text or what the text says. So once I get all these out here then I'll be able to change the text or the label that's on each button. And then the rollover works and um, all of that kind of stuff is controlled by uh, the library. So if I don't like how it looks, I can easily go back to the library, change it once in the library, and all seven copies that I have out here will change. Okay, so there's my buttons. Let me zoom out a bit. And then I could start changing the text on each one. So if I select this and come down to the property bar, it shows me what text is there. So maybe um, this is going to be the button to my calendar page. So I can type that and you can see the text changes and maybe I have a link here to um, homework. Okay, you can see I can go through and type these in. Maybe this end one over here is going to be the home button. Back to my home page. Okay, so I can change each one. I won't go through and change all of them. Um, uh, but before we finish here, you can see there's one little issue. When I change this text, especially the home one, it's very obvious, is that when I change the text, it the text isn't aligned anymore, so when I change the length of the text, and again, that's all controlled by what's happening over here in the library. So I'm going to go back into my um, button symbol just by double clicking on it over here. It opens it back up for me in that library uh, in that button tool, and if I select this text box, so I did a good job lining the text box up with a button. But if the length of the text inside the text box changed, like when I wrote a, a word that had less letters, then it wasn't lined up anymore. 
um, all I need to do is select the text box, come down to the properties bar, and center the text inside the text box. So that if the text changes length, it'll be centered inside um, the box. So I've done that on the upstate. Click out on the canvas. I need to go to the overstate, and I need to do that there as well. Okay, so I've made those two changes. Now I'm just going to go back to page one here and you can see that the, that text has um, realigned itself. Now this little green film over here is actually called a slice that Dreamweaver's put over the top of this and these red lines that have suddenly showed up. Those are um, slice guides for fireworks. So when I tell it to, fireworks is going to cut this graphic or this document up into pieces because I need it into separate pieces once I get it back into Dreamweaver. Um, before we before we uh, go on to the next tutorial, let's do a quick preview in the browser so we can see what those buttons really look like and see how they function, see if the rollovers work and see if I like how they look. Okay, so I'm going to pull that back over. So there is what it's looking like right now and I should be able to roll over these and the rollovers work. They're a little bit too dramatic for me and I don't think I like that uh, beveled edge. So if, I, if, if it's too much, if I need to make a change to these, all I need to do, I don't have to go to all seven, I'm just going to come back over here to the library, double click on this, and first I want to take this beveled edge off, and I think that my, so I selected the rectangle to take that off, and if you have trouble selecting the rectangle, um, you can always select it over here, that gets the rectangle selected. Um, then I can click on the text there, and I think the text is too strong, so I'm going to just take bold off, and maybe that's all I need to do. So I've done that on the, um, and I'm going to make the text a little bit smaller too, maybe down to 14. Okay, and uh, so I make these changes on the upstate, but I also need to make these on the overstate. So I'm going to click off and switch here to the overstate, and first get the rectangle selected take off that inner bevel, get the text selected, uh, take off the bold and change the font size to 13. Alright, and then I can just uh, go back out to my document to page 1 and let's preview it in the browser again and see how it's looking. It takes it a second to load up here. Alright, okay so that's how it's looking now. I think it looks better. I'm not sure if I like that uh, that orange look when I roll over it, but we can we can play with that as we go. Okay.